Yeah, my, I'm, I'm John Ari and I'm a professor of sociology at uh, Lancaster and uh, I'm very interested in the ways in which uh, en societies are energised and the consequences of the, their energising for the global environment and indeed for the ways in which uh, cons um, resources are consumed, produced and consumed. And in particular, I'm interested in the question of oil and the, what I call the oiling of society. And I've recently published, I'm about to publish a book called uh, Societies Beyond Oil. I think there are two absolutely central questions to do with the environment. First, uh, the ways in which uh, resources are being used up and particularly energy resources are being used up and therefore the high carbon patterns of living established in the course of the 19th but especially the 20th century uh, will not last forever and they were dependent on uh, non-renewable resources especially uh, oil and gas and second Obviously, the use of these fossil fuels has uh, generated uh, climate changes which now seem to be pretty well established by the various climate sciences and in order to do anything about those, uh, all sorts of things about the kinds of social practices that are found in different societies have to be radically restructured. Uh, what I like to call societies having been powered up now need to power down pretty rapidly. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, could you please give us a short description of your talk? Yes, my, my talk is, in, is about the ways in which uh, there are various sorts of systems which have got set up, they were set up high carbon systems especially in the first half of the 20th century and especially or initially in the in North America and the US and they were sort of a cluster of high carbon systems they led to new kinds of social practice new habits and uh, they've set up these systems have set up all sorts of uh, environmental uh, risks and so I'm going to be talking about some of these environmental risks that these high, these interdependent, clustered, high carbon systems uh, initiated uh, and then of course spread globally. We talk of globalization, the most important aspects of globalization is the spreading of high carbon systems, high carbon lives. Okay, great, thank you. Um, why do you find this research exciting? Uh, I find the research uh, exciting because it's a very crucial thing for the social sciences to be engaged with. Uh, it kind of, in many ways, since uh, the research on climate, changing climates and uh, energy use, show the utter centrality of social practices, therefore it's the social sciences that have to be at the very centre of the analyses of both the kind of the causes of all of this and the deleterious uh, dramatic uh, consequences. So it puts social science at the centre, but also it kind of makes it very urgent as well, because so many of the sorts of system changes uh, both uh, sort of economic, social, technological and in terms of emissions and resources are already in the system. They are proceeding fast and so the kind, there's a kind of urgency of uh, inserting new kinds of analyses into, the, into examining these processes. Right, okay, good, thank you. Um, so could you please describe a few of your key findings or what's the most interesting finding in your research? <coughs> uh, I think uh, two things I'd emphasize. One is the importance of habits. Habits 
are ingrained, uh, they're embodied, they're built into the ways in which people do things and sort of take for granted that this is the way things are done, this is how you, you know, get, from, get from home to work, this is how you socialise, uh, these are the way you make, you make new friends or whatever it is. You, there are these sort of powerfully ingrained habits and they are very difficult to break and some of those habits last decades. In fact, driving, car driving is a kind of habit that dates from the late 19th century uh, and it's kind of spread around the world getting on for, nearly, uh, getting on for a billion cars and uh, lorries now around the world. So that's one sort of thing of the habits. And then the other thing that's very interesting is that things actually can change and they can change quite dramatically. So we shouldn't think everything is locked into place, although most things are. And uh, obviously the growth of the uh, internet, mobile telephony, um, <coughs> are very interesting examples of rapid change where people didn't know they needed the internet, they didn't know they needed mobile phones, smartphones and uh, iPads and so on. But they then form new habits. So, but this does bring out that systems can, new systems can arise. And what I'm sort of particularly interested in is, I don't know how this is going to happen, how this could possibly be engineered. How could it be that new system, new kind of a cluster of low carbon systems could come to be uh, initiated uh, and sort of globally engineered, which would make redundant some of the existing, or all of the high carbon uh, systems that we kind of got used to. Thank you. Great. Very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> You'll come to the talk. <laughs> <laughs> what are the practical or theoretical implications of your findings? There are, there are sort of academic implications, which are obviously to do with placing uh, issues of energy, resources, uh, and the consequences of different patterns of production and consumption kind of at the center of a of a, of a, of a social science of the social sciences so it sort of puts puts energy central energy and its and its often perverse consequences utterly central um, so that's and I'm for example currently editing a issue of, a, of the journal theory culture and society on energy and society, trying to develop that sort of thinking. So that's an academic implication. The, the, the practical implication is obviously to uh, try to persuade uh, uh, NGOs and governments that these are really significant issues, that you can make changes, but that uh, the making of change is extraordinarily difficult and it certainly doesn't come about simply by policy makers telling people you should behave differently. Um, it, it's a much more complicated thing to do with system change and, the, and trying to think how was it that other systems had changed in the past or new systems grew and how that might then relate to uh, an array of low carbon systems. Yeah, very good. It's great. Very important. Um, so how would you hope that this research could be further developed? Oh. Um, uh, I th well, one of the things that uh, is the research implies quite difficult sorts of relationships between with the economy. So it's one of the problems, some people in, now describe these as wicked problems because the very sort of powerful uh, corporations and governments that are kind of causing 
the problems are also those which are being expected to make changes uh, and uh, initiate uh, low carbon systems. So one of the thing, one of the kind of areas of research would be how to refocus the ways in which Western capitalist economies kind of operate and especially operate through the power of uh, powerful finance to, to sort of rein in and to, to, to well to research how to rein in to regulate to downsize the significance of financial institutions in the organizing of Western economies. And one of the things that I'm really uh, obsessed by, I'm going to write a book about what I call offshoring, the significance of offshored relationships, including offshore tax uh, uh, arrangements and so on. How to bring offshore onshore, so that's a, a sort of future dom important domain of research, uh, which is actually a bit to do with trying to stop you know, manufacturing being offshore, trying to stop tax revenues, and flows of money being offshore, how to stop uh, environmental waste being offshore to uh, poorer countries of the world and so on. So bring on offshore, onshore. Okay, good. Thanks a lot. It's okay. very interesting.